It's all the new construction. It's the casinos and golf courses. It's all California. Many believe those and several other myths are true about water resources in Southern Nevada. However, we do the research and have the facts. It's time to tap the truth. I'm Colby Pellegrino, the Deputy General Manager of Resources for the Southern Nevada Water Authority. Today's topic is, so what are we doing to bring more water to Las Vegas from places that have lots of water? Well, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has done quite a bit. Through the years, we've studied all sorts of different ideas, from small practical solutions to really large, grandiose things that would take decades, 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 and billions of dollars to implement. What we've focused on are smaller projects with our partners on the Colorado River, such as our partnership with Metropolitan Water District of Southern California on the Pure Water Project. So Pure Water is taking water, wastewater that's discharged to the ocean, treating it and redistributing it to groundwater basins in Southern California, creating a new water resource that can then be pumped out of the ground. That water will be pumped out of the ground and used by Metropolitan Water District. And for the portion that SNWA funds, they will leave a like amount of their water in Lake Mead for us to use. We're also actively studying things like desalination in Mexico and brackish water desalination and looking for other similar opportunities. But what we have to ensure is that any opportunity that we incorporate make sense from a price standpoint for our customers. These alternative resources like desalination carry a price tag that's six to 10 times more than what we wholesale water for today. So it's important for us to look for these new resources and blend them into our portfolio when it makes sense. But we can't go after a large project on our own because we're such a small portion of the Colorado River. So by partnering with our other agencies um, like us in California, Mexico, and Arizona, we're able to bring in water that makes sense for this community in a way that also makes financial sense for this community. Also, I'll just pick on one project, for example, that we hear is bringing water in from the Mississippi River. What we don't realize as we sit here in the Colorado River is the Mississippi River is actually experiencing their own climate change impacts. There were significant portions of the Mississippi River where they were unable to have ships navigate, which is one of the major functions of that river from a nationwide economic standpoint, just because the flows were lower than they usually are. So yes, there's still a large volume of water, but it's not necessarily there for Southern Nevada to come grab. Uh, the Great Lakes heard talk of these water importation projects and they actually signed a compact saying they would not agree to export any water. And if for some reason we ever were to get a major billions and billions of dollar project like that approved, the environmental compliance associated with it, the design work, the construction, you're not talking about something that can solve today's crisis. You're talking about something that would take decades and decades and decades, even with everyone on every level of government standing behind it to get it constructed. If you'd like to learn more about many other water myths and the truth behind them, you can find us on YouTube at SNWA Video or click the link on your screen to access more episodes.